In this video, we'll take a look at some of the initial configuration settings that need to be made on a new SharePoint installation. We'll examine specifically the Administrator Task List on Central Administration, the art of scaling multiple SharePoint services across multiple physical servers, and the customization of adding non-Microsoft icons to the display of document libraries and lists. Let's get started. We'll use Central Admin to configure SharePoint. For example, to configure the inbound and outbound email settings, we can simply click into the task, and there's a hyperlink under the action. That'll take us straight to the inbound email settings, or we can turn on Site Email so that users can send documents straight to document libraries that have been email enabled. For the settings mode, automatic is default, and SharePoint will automatically retrieve all of the settings necessary to provide SMTP relay. Advanced will allow you to, instead of using the SMTP service in IIS here on this server, actually create a drop folder where email will be placed, and then you'll have to retrieve it with a separate SMTP service. The directory management service is an interesting feature. It will go and create contacts and distribution groups over in your directory service. This will allow users to see email enabled sites, lists, and libraries in the global address list on your Exchange server. And it will also automatically allow them to create distribution groups for email purposes straight from a SharePoint site. If this server is going to be one of many in a Moss SharePoint farm, you can even tell this server to use remote directory management services that are running on a different SharePoint server in the farm. The inbound email display address will be the name of the list or library or site at, and here the administrator can reconfigure the email domain name for this SharePoint server. Last but not least, the SMTP relay services in SharePoint, by default, are configured to accept inbound email from any and all relays. If you want to protect your MOS server, you can narrow the scope of SMTP relay servers that SharePoint is willing to accept inbound email from. Upon clicking OK, notice that the incoming email settings task has now been moved to a complete status and removed from the view of our administrator task list. Now we'll flip the coin over and configure outbound email settings that the SharePoint server will use when sending out email notifications such as alerts. First we must specify the name of an outbound SMTP server. This is the mail server that Windows SharePoint services will use to send all of the email messages to. In the From Address field, you can cosmetically enter any email address that you want the SharePoint server to always send its email from. Make sure it's a valid mailbox over in your email system. The reply to address may or may not be the same as the from address. Here you see I'm using the server's email box as the from address. But if a user were to receive an alert notification and attempt to reply to it, we don't want that email coming back to the inbox of SP server. This is a mechanical device and doesn't have the intuition to open and read an inbound email. So instead, I'm going to name a person as the reply to address. Last but not least, you can set the character set for the email in case you need to support multilingual or non-unicode language translations. Click OK to that, and voila, we have completed a second administrator task. In a large SharePoint enterprise, when it comes to scaling out your SharePoint servers, this diagram explains how you can have multiple SharePoint servers all serving the same user base. Here I have three web front-end servers. Remember, during MOS installation, you have the option to choose WFE as the installation type. The three orange web front-end servers all service my client PCs. They also all point to a separate fourth MOS server called the Index Server. It's running only the index services and not serving web pages directly to the clients. It performs all crawling and search results. 
Lastly, all four front-end servers are pointing to two SQL servers in a cluster at the back. To scale out a large SharePoint environment, visit Central Administration from the server in the farm that is running the administration services. Clicking on any given server's name, Central Administration presents you with a list of all of the services that that particular SharePoint server is performing in your farm. You can now customize and pick and choose which services each box will actually perform. The last thing I'd like to show you in this video is the addition of an iFilter to our Moss installation. iFilters add functionality to IIS which supports SharePoint. Here we have a document library that has a PDF file uploaded into it. Notice that the type icon for this file does not represent the Adobe icon for PDF format. Also, if we were to do a search for any of the words in the title of this document, this document would not show up as a result because right now it is not being indexed. Why? It's a foreign file format for SharePoint. In order to install the iFilter for PDF files, I need to visit the Adobe Manufacturer's website. Having downloaded the iFilter60.exe installation file, I now simply run that file on my SharePoint server. Now the installation process we see here is unique to Adobe PDF iFilters. Each manufacturer of foreign formats will provide their own iFilter and the installation processes may look different for each. There are no configuration decisions to make. Simply click OK to the successful installation of the iFilter. But we're not done yet. Installing the iFilter to include PDFs and indexing doesn't necessarily put the Adobe icon in the type column of document libraries. For that, there's a little more footwork involved. Create a 16 by 16 icon GIF file and name it PDF 16 GIF. You can also copy one of the existing Adobe icons from a machine that already has the icon on it. You need to place the icon file into the 12 hive of Moss 2007. The path is under Program Files, Common Files, Microsoft Shared, Web Server Extensions 12. Within the 12 hive there's a template folder and in the subfolder called Images we're going to go ahead and paste in a PDF 16 file that I've already created. Now that the PDF 16 file resides in this directory we must now navigate within the template folder of the 12 hive to a different subfolder called XML. In here we will edit the docicon.xml file. Now XML files can be edited with any text editor. I'm going to use Notepad. Specifically we need to add our new icon to the by extension section of this file. To keep it in alphabetical order I will add my new mapping key entry just above the existing PNG. Just follow the same format as the mapping key below using PDF in our GIF. Now that I've added this entry, I'll save the changes to this control file. And ta-da! The Adobe icon now appears in our document library. This took care of the icon, but it didn't take care of the search settings. The iFilter 6.0 we installed made Adobe files possible to be indexed by SharePoint. In order to configure them for search, we have to edit the search settings. To configure search to include the new Adobe files, here in Central Administration we are going to visit the Shared Service Provider. And within the SSP Administration, specifically the search settings. What we're concerned with here are the file types included in the index crawls. Notice that PDF is not among them. We need to add PDF as an acceptable file type to be indexed by the search service. So we'll click New File Type, add the extension PDF, and now SharePoint will begin indexing our PDF content. Also, after having edited the XML file, 
I did have to reset IIS by either rebooting the whole operating system or performing an IIS reset statement with the browser closed. So to recap, find a pdf16.gif file or create a 16 by 16 icon yourself. Store that file into the 12 hives templates images folder. Then edit the docicon.xml file found in the 12 hives templates XML folder and add the PDF key mapping to be the value PDF16.gif. Reset IIS and the icon will appear in your document libraries for your PDF files. In this video, we looked at the initial configuration of a new SharePoint installation. We used the Central Administration's Administrator Task List to provide hints for post-install configuration. Specifically, we set the inbound and outbound email settings. We also added the Adobe Manufacturer's iFilter so that we could search for the PDF file format, and we added a custom PDF icon so that our document libraries would now display the Adobe icon in the type column. Please return to SharePoint-Screencast.com for more SharePoint video tutorials.